Barcelona had read a busy transfer window spearheaded by the new sporting director under Laporta's board, Mati Almani. It has really been a long time since someone in administrative role has received the admiration and the reserve friends that Almani has got, and rightfully so. For a club that was horribly mismanaged under the last administration, a smart transfer window combined with shredded contract renewals. Now that Xavi has a signing he asked for, his concept of the Barcelona he envisioned is starting to flesh out. Granted, there are some unfortunate circumstances circumstances, specifically Ansu Fati injury and Usman Dembele failed contract renewal. In this video, Team FCB will aim to nail down three ways in which the team can line up with external factors taken into account. The first lineup we explore is the one that will focus on balancing the team's strengths and players' role while minimizing weaknesses. In goal, Mark andre Ter Stegen will start in all three lineups despite his somewhat shaky performance this season and before. He is the best goalkeeper that Barcelona has. Similarly, Jordi Alba is the first choice left back by far. Since the 4-3-3 is the ideal formation for Barcelona from what we have seen under Xavi, it makes sense for the ideal lineup to employ the same formation. Defining the role and choosing the players goes hand in hand. Though some may argue and rightfully so that the player's quality can often override the importance of a certain role being essential to a system. Our focus is on making the team strengths and the player's role work hand in hand. This means that even though Gavi can play as a left winger, he ends up dropping inside. That isn't necessarily a drawback as Jordi Alba gets more space as a result. But for Abde to play as the left winger, he will be in a preferred role as an inverted winger and preferred position as well. In theory, you will cut in often as well, allowing Jordi Alba to occupy the more expensive spaces. In fact, the gravity that Abde as an inverted winger would exert on the opposition is arguably more than Gavi Bould as a false winger. Alongside the Moroccan winger, Ferran Torres should start as a striker. The ex-Manchester City striker linked up reasonably well with the midfielder and is comfortable in the tight spaces. However, his ability to be in the right spot at the right time in the box is vital. As a case can be made for Pierre Emerike Abumayang to start as well. The main issue against this segment is the fact that he hasn't played in the similar situation successfully for more than two years. In contrast, Ferran has played for Luis Enrique Spanish side as well as Guardiola Manchester City team as a striker. On the right, Barcelona new winger Adama Traore looks to pin down the, the spot. Usman Dembele is the only other realistic option here alongside Abde. But with uncertainty surrounding the Frenchman's playtime as well as as well as Traore's excellent debut, the Spanish winger has to be the ideal choice. As Adama will do best when occupying the wide areas and dribbling down the line rather than cutting in often, Danny Alves will complement his play style better than Serginho does. For one, Alves is a better passer than the American right back. Secondly, he has looked more confident in that role and thirdly, he has been in a great form. Another issue with this starting over the Brazilian is that the latter is much more comfortable when operating in the channel rather than solely on the wing. As the result of Gavi's exclusion, the optimal midfielder trio becomes apparent. Sergio Busquets is still Barcelona untouchable pivot who can be partnered with the latest golden boy Pedri and Frankie Young. There is an evidence to one who has watch Barcelona this season. Pedri has been crucial to the team position based play ever since his return from injury. Frankie de Jong meanwhile has struggled for a long time now but with Gavi, Nico Gonzalez and Derek Kupic being the other realistic option he can comfortably slot into the starting 11. The only player who could give the Dutchman a run for his money at the moment would be Gavi. The young La Masia midfielder has shown immense talent and has performed well even when asked to be a false winger. In fact an argument can be made for the young Spaniard being better than the young in many matches recently. Despite this, his experience, impeccable rotation with his teammate and decision making means that he is a better interior than Gavi for Barcelona at the moment. In defense, the fullback spots have been nailed down and the center back pairing is just as straightforward. Gerard Piquet and Ronald Araujo have been in good form, contribute a lot to set pieces and have been solid if not for some communication errors that should reduce the more they play together. Now that the lineup that balances the role with quality has been nailed down, we take a look at two alternatives to this. The first alternative will focus on the team that neglects the tendency to make errors in defense and will suit a team that want to sustain attacking play with as many players as possible. Though the formation is 4-3-3 on paper, this team will essentially transition to a 3-4-3 when attacking. The system will utilize Busquet incredible line breaking passes while taking into account his sour pace to ensure the team isn't caught out on the counter attack. To do this though, Busquet start as the pivot 
he will drop back between the central midfielders as a halfback as he did under Pep Guardiola. This will help him not only to get at the ball and play it forward but also when the team is defending. Simultaneously the team will focus on forcing the opposition wide by having narrow centre-offs. Again, Ronald and PK being paired up will be the optimal solution. Eric Garcia will be a great addition to a back three but, but since this formation doesn't utilize a conventional back three, he misses out yet again. This time I'm choosing Serginho Desk in the right back spot. He is the more viable option since in a 3-4-3, in a both fullback will need to cover a lot of ground. At 38 year old of age, the Danny Alves fullback can't really play multiple games a week and act as a wide midfielder. The question here isn't of quality but of endurance. This way of lining up means that the team can, in theory, form a back five at the back. This possibly in itself means the midfielder can be more inclined offensively than usual. As a result, Gavi can be chosen alongside Pedri in the midfield. Despite all of the young technical excellence, Gavi simply offers more versatility and incision in terms of playing the ball through. Ricky Pucci does provide more than Gavi when it comes to playing the final ball, but Gavi trumps him in his defensive work rate, positional sense and timing of the ball. In attack, Guzman Dembele would have been the perfect fit but his contract situation and current controversy combines with good performance by the other forwards means he will not make the lineup. Ferran Torres instead can start as the left winger. This is in fact his least preferred position out of the front three. Ferran Jugler starting over him when talking about the left wing spot has some merit as well but in the end Torres is just a much better and more experienced player at the moment. Adama Traore is Barcelona's best bet at the right wing especially for a formation as attacking as this. He made that abundantly clear on his debut against Atletico Madrid. In attack what this formation can aim to do is make Ferran and Abumayang play off each other. They are immediate drawback to this. Both of them perform better as a solo strikers and Abumayang has explicitly struggled in two striker system. However, the potential that his partnership as is highly prolific, Abumayang will be the main striker and the kind of crosses. And the kind of crosses that will bring out the best of him will be delivered by Adama Traore and Jory Alba. The penalty area will be his point of concern first and foremost. Ferran Torres will act as a left inside forward. This entails occupying spaces in the box in order to open up the avenues for a Gabonese striker combining well with Alba and the midfielders, as well as finishing off any chances that Abumayang fails to execute. Essentially, this formation will maximize Abumayang's ability in the box while sacrificing the number of chances coming to Ferran, who has a much better conversion rate and does very well to sniff out any opportunity in the box. The third lineup is more of an experimental one. It is one we could have seen if the team was in more comfortable position in the league. It does have a great merit though. For one, it is unlike the usual 4-3-3. Every team should have multiple formations even if they have the same principle. This can sometimes be the difference in the first and the second place, especially when neither team is significantly better than the other in the pure quality. The sheer unpredictability as well as the potential playoffs this formation could produce are enough to give it a try. Retaining Ter Stegen in goal, he has a different back four in front of him in this formation. Jordi Alba will continue as a left back of course, but this time Eric Garcia slots in as a left center off. Gerard Piquet will be his defensive partner with Ronald Araro as a right back. On paper, this is the 4-4-2 diamond, but in practice, a back three will be formed, with Jordi Alba essentially being the left midfielder. The midfield is where the most significant changes will be seen. Nico Gonzalez will start as the pivot. He has done tremendously in that role at Barcelona B. And with Frankie de Jong as one of the interiors, he has a defensive help as well. De Jong will be assigned more vertical movement as compared to the other interior Pedri. In the attacking midfield position, Ricky Puch the most promise, push vision, agility and incisive execution of passes are precious to a team like Barcelona. His weakness, merely defensive positioning and decision making will be minimized in this position. Higher of him Ferran Torres and Abumayang will form a striking partnership. This formation focuses more on chances created through the middle rather than the wings. The main benefit of this role as for the two strikers is that both of them will be able to play space oriented roles rather than ball oriented roles. What this means is that someone whose strength is dribbling such as Adama Traore would be a worse fit than someone who thrives in situation requiring situation precision such as Torres and Abumayang. So ladies and gentlemen that's everything from today Team FCB Barcelona analysis. Please do let me know your thoughts in the comment down below and thank you for joining and thank you for reaching till the end. But until next time and as always see you in the next video.